when and how you respond to the invitation, the call of Jesus Christ, have consequences on your life and the ultimate outcome of your life. Peter was a candidate by the call of Jesus upon his life. A fisherman he was. Last week we saw Matthew, a tax collector, hated by all, not belonging, public sinner, but by the call of Jesus over his life, he became a candidate for world-changing impacts. Paul Apostle was such a bigot. He was such a nuisance and annoyance to the church, persecutor and hater of the church. He was fixed in his ways against the church and he murdered Christians or caused them to be murdered. He is the least qualified person to be head in Christianity. But he was seized by the call of God in his life. If he stayed just a Jew and a Jewish religious lawyer and power, he will be known nowhere except just the, the name that Paul or Saul persecuted the church. But today, he is the reason why the New Testament letters are more than maybe just five. He is the reason why people can preach about grace. He is the man who makes Christianity known in cultures and places. He became the apostle of the Gentile. This is what God does to somebody who sits in church and thinks he has no future. So when I say write down, I am a candidate for world changing impact. You may not look like it, but if you follow the steps and the procedures and the processes that these ancient men of the gospel that they followed in Christ, how they arrived at the place of changing everywhere, and making the gospel available to us, influencing cultures, changing kingdoms, sir, there are territories to be taken by Jesus, and he's looking for an ordinary person. An ordinary person with depression to grapple with. An ordinary person with bad marriage to deal with. An ordinary person with emptiness and poverty. Ordinary person as a single mother. Ordinary person as a single father, as a divorcee. Ordinary person as a man who has never seen the father, whose mother ran away before she could know how to say mama. Every form of ordinariness that makes you qualified for the, for the office of war changer. I want you to speak it to yourself. Right now you may be poorer than whoever is the poorest you have known. Right now, your life may mean nothing to you because your self-worth is next to nothing. But if you spy into the agenda of heaven and you are given a glimpse into what is written of you in the scrolls, God is saying, I will turn you into something. That's what God says. The vision of this house is to raise impact makers. People that people love you because you make impact or hate you because you make impact. Let people, when they quarrel with you, let, they, let them quarrel with you because you have turned things around positively. That you are an impact making person. Because let me tell you the truth. If you are an impact making person, don't expect everybody to love you. There are mediocres who want to keep the level small in order to contain their small ego and small self. And the day you come in and blow it up, you blow away their confidence. And they want to make you feel guilty for exposing their mediocrity and, and littleness. Just like I said, if they persecute you in one city, go to another. So if you are, if you are, if you are opposed because you are excellent, you are making positive impacts, don't judge, your, don't blame yourself. Don't adjust your standard to accommodate small, mediocre-minded people. Blow it up. Let your only crime is that you turn dust into gold. That is what it means to turn ordinary people into champion. Glory to God. Glory. You want to clap? Go ahead. Just clap. Make sure you clap. Make sure you clap. Yeah. Glory to God. Can I, can I tell you something? 
this is why I need you in church Monday, tomorrow at the fireplace, Tuesday. Partners and everyone, anointing service on the first. And from the first to the last day, every day will be anointing service. From the first, 430, come with all partners and non-partners. It will be anointing. That means anointing will mean we will engage the Holy Ghost tangibly. Anointing is the physical representation of the oil of God called the Holy Spirit. We will, we will engage anointing to break out and break into something. Shout hallelujah. If you ask me, why do you want me to be there? So that you can be raised into a person who can turn dust into gold. You can be raised into somebody like Joseph who will stay in prison and the commander of the prison will surrender to you. That you walk into a meeting that Pharaoh was trying. Pharaoh, Pharaoh is having high blood pressure because nobody has been able to talk to him in the place of understanding. But by the time you are done, somebody tells you you are in charge of this nation. Sir, these things did not happen in heaven, they happen on earth. Sir, these things are not fables, they are truths. There, is, there was a Joseph and there was a Pharaoh and there was famine. And there was solution. It was an ordinary man in the prison that changed it. If you are in a prison, sir, get ready to change the nation. So don't prepare to die. I don't attend burial. If you, if you die and think I will come, it's a bad thing. Because let me tell you ahead, I will not come. I prepare people to leave. If you are alive and you invite me, I will live with you. I want to attend your thanksgiving. I want to celebrate you. So don't prepare to die and be on a waiting list of death and look for my pity. I have no pity for the dead. I have attention for the living. Rise. Say, I am nominated among the living, the thriving, the succeeding, the increasing, the prospering. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Glory to do you, do you. Do you love hearing those words? So how did, let's simply break it down. So how did Jesus Christ turn these ordinary people into world changers? How are we going to turn these ordinary people, our ordinary selves into world changers in every area? So that when we go to heaven, heaven, this, Jesus Christ tells us about heaven. There are those who preach grace doctrine and say whatever you do, you will go to heaven at last. If you are, once you are a believer. So heaven is a reward. is a crown. And every crown comes after battle. Our faith, this is the place of battle. Battle against evil. Battle against our lust and desires. Fighting against our little, dead, hopeless self. In order to live the life of God on earth. Just Christ said on the last day shall be said, well done. So heaven shall be a well done system. It shall not be well done because you believe. Well done, you did this and that and that. Well done, you did this, that. So those who preach this nonsense, they should take note. This is the place of making impact for Jesus. I don't preach heaven at last. I preach heaven every day. Every day you are overcoming is a heaven day. When God calls you home, there are no regrets. That is a life of a champion. A champion, the first lady I've celebrated the grace of God in your life. Your, your message this morning is just one of the, the, the purest and the sweetest thing in my soul. Being useful. Kindness is being useful to yourself, to others, and to God. It's, it's unforgettable. Thank you so very much. So, 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 so beautiful. This is the place to be kind. And when you appear before the throne of grace, say, well done. You were useful. You were useful to God. You were useful to the kingdom. You were useful to the body of Christ. You were useful to humanity. Not that be just because you believe and after that you live the life of a pagan. And the only reason pagans will not go to heaven and you will go is that you believe and they didn't believe but you were like them in everything. Can you imagine God who is not just? We say he's a loving God. So you think love erases justice. God is as much a loving God as he's a just God. His justice is equal to his love, depending on which side of him you hold him. If you hold him in the side of love, love is eternal. If you turn to the side of his justice, justice is eternal. If you turn to him in the place of faithfulness, it is eternal. So you don't lie. People are preaching from little knowledge. 
And I'm trusting God one day to give me opportunity to share something with the world. So how did they turn these ordinary people? Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Number one, the call. The call. Every one of you have a call of God in your life. Every one of you has a call. A call of God in your life. Write down number one, call. That's what we have been talking about. They were called. Have you been called? Have you been called? Being called is not being called to be a bishop or being called to be an evangelist. He could, he could, he could. Who get it? He he could, he could, he could. Who get it when he could? Don't stop bothering me. He could is the call of God for you to leave. Abraham began with call. That is a call. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Who are you? What are you doing right now? Where are you? Where do you live? What do you do in your life? Who are you? That is where your call meets you. Your call meets you in that place of robbery, in that place of adultery, in that place of fornication, in that place of hate and envy. Your call meets you in that place of laziness and idleness. Your call meets you in that place of witchcraft where you hate all those who prosper and want to drag people down. Your call meets you where you hide people's files in the office. Your call meets you where you sit upon people's money on your account and they are not paid their salaries and given their allowances. That's where your call meets you. And your call is very simple. The scripture says they were fishermen. And what did just guys, what was the call? Follow me. You keeping somebody's money, distracting somebody's family, follow me. That's the call of everyone. So all of us cannot be prophets and bishops and church founders. Some people, once they are born again, they start church. There are calls within the call. The general call is what? Follow me. You cannot follow God and the next moment, you have to start fellowship in church. You have to start prophesying people and you stop walking. And you are prophesying to earn money. It's not the call of God that makes you poor. The call of God blesses you. So go and walk. Do something. If God genuinely calls you into full-time ministry, there will be signs. And part of the sign will not be you begging around for food and your family being exposed to all manner of hardship because you are answering a call you impose upon your spirit. I don't know what spirit what is the spirit of God because it's like I'm talking to somebody some people, some people just answer call and put their families in, in danger they don't have food to eat nothing to do he could, he could, he could, he could. He could call doesn't mean you are no longer working except you are called specifically into ministry and there will be proof God is faithful God told me years ago 20, 20, 30 years ago exactly 30 years ago if I am the one calling you I will give you everything you need so that is why in church I don't raise money I used to be a Catholic priest for 13 plus years check my track record I have never raised money for any personal thing I have never I launched my book once raised money, build school structure in school for Catholic church is standing there somebody knows what I'm talking about I raised money from my first album use it to repair the first father's house I moved into in Eman Oran that was in 2006 every cobble I raised from the music went into renovating the church and I took no one cobble from that church as a refund I have never raised money to have something to eat God told me if I am the one calling you I will give you, sir. The day God tells you to bless me, when you bless me, you have entered into another level. Sir, I answer this call with pride. I am happy answering this call because I, I testify that God is faithful. So if you say God has called you, sir, there has to be a proof. You have to prove. Don't lie against my God. My God is not a wicked God. God doesn't use call to punish people. So you cannot be homeless because you have answered a call cannot beg for food because you have answered a call. Find out what you have answered. You were, all of us are called. Not everybody is called to leave their work. So prosper in your work. So there is a call. Have you written down? 
changing the world begins with what? A call. And what is the sentence and the statement of the call? Simple. Follow me. We have been talking about that. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. A Matthew, a Matthew, a Matthew case has just passed on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office and he said to him, what is it again? Follow me. In this case, it meant leave everything you are doing. Just get specified to Peter and the rest. I will make you what? Fishers of men. Magdalene followed Jesus, but she brought money. She was not stealing that money. That's the difference. Magdalene followed Jesus. If you go look, look at Luke's gospel, Magdalene, among others, were those who had been healed, delivered of strange demonic oppressions. And from their resources, they took care of the needs of Jesus. They were not beggars. They were not stealing. Their own call was support. And follow. So follow. Tell somebody, the call is to follow. So the, 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 the issue today is when and how you respond this is the message I'm sharing with you today. When and how you respond. So, let's have the title of the message. Different responses and different consequences. This is all I'm talking about. Different responses and different consequences. That's the title of the message. If you go to church, if you leave church today, somebody asks you, what, what was the theme? What was the topic for the message today? Tell the person, different responses different consequences the call is to everyone the difference between us uh, the responses or the difference between us is the, the response how we respond the way you respond is what makes you different from the way another person it is what makes you different from another person the way you respond your response. So we are talking about different responses and different consequences. Different responses and different consequences. And pay attention to this line. When and how you respond to the invitation, the call of Jesus Christ, have consequences on your life and the ultimate outcome of your life. I break it down. When you answer, when I mean by when, I mean the time how long it takes you to answer the call just can say follow me and you stay for 50 years before you follow it will have impact and outcome consequences on your life when he says follow me how you respond also so there is when you respond re referring to the time of your responding how you respond referring to the manner the level of your response the time and your manner of responding to this call have consequences on your life and the ultimate outcome of your life whether in heaven or in hell so Judas was called like others how he responded to that call ended with him hanging on a tree. He did not hear when Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they... He had died before that time. So, Judas is the first minister who committed suicide. And it's not a beautiful thing. It's what we have to pray at every point. And do all that you can in every possible way to make sure nobody follows God and ends up in suicide, suicide like Judas. Do all that you can in your prayer. That shows how you responded, how Judas responded. So, when have you responded and how have you responded? Consequences are there. The perfect plan and life of God for you begin practically when you follow his son when you answer that call I take it again the perfect plan there are so many plans though not every plan is perfect plan 
So in heaven there are plan A's, plan B's, plan C's. So when we talk about a governor, a president, <laughs> don't think it's one person that was on the table. Including marriage. One person does not just have one woman or one man. Oh, there are options. The point is that whoever you marry will determine the outcome of your life. <laughs> so, you can, have you heard that there is only one woman for one man on earth? It's not true. Some people married, but not the perfect plan of God. And they had corresponding endings. They were married. So be careful. So no, 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 don't joke. Sir, there is what is called permissive will of God. Permissive will of God can say, oh, they are too stubborn. They are so stubborn, I've tried everything. If after we try everything to help them from heaven, they are not ready to be helped, let them follow this way. The perfect will of God was that those who left Egypt, all of them, will reach the Canaan land. It was permitted that Moses should not see the promised land. And it was permitted that a generation will die in the desert. So be careful which one you embrace. The plan of God is perfect. So every day, look into the presence of God in studying the word of God and seeking the Holy Spirit to know perfect plan. Don't just say, now nah, you know, whatever it is, God can permit whatever it is that makes you die early. One of the greatest problems we are having now in Christianity is Christianity being preached by those who don't have sufficient knowledge of humanity. One of the great gifts in the Catholic Church is that those who preach the gospel are exposed first to studying humanities. They know about man. Before they do divinity, they do theology. So one of the greatest things, because right now, what they call grace doctrine is a crisis. Let me tell you one of the crises there. It presents man as a machine. That man does not have will and man cannot change. Man is not a machine. A man who says yes today has capacity by his free will to say no tomorrow. And the day he says no, the consequences of no starts from that day. And the day again he says yes, the consequences of what? Yes, full loose. So in grace doctrine, what liars are teaching my generation is that once you say yes and you are born again, there is no way you will not go to heaven. It means, it is presumed, once you say yes, your will cannot change. Genesis has proven to us that the plan of God originally for man failed because man did not say yes every day. A particular day, man said no to, to the plan of God and man became naked and glory departed. God can give you a perfect marriage. You say yes on a wedding day. Five years later, you begin to say no to the plans of a perfect marriage and the consequences of a useless marriage will visit you. So people preach without knowledge of moral moral power, moral will of man, moral faculty of man. These are the problems we have. Have baked preachers who prove to know more than those who write the Bible. And they are turning my generation upside down. And God will trouble them. That's what Paul preached for, prayed for such people in Galatia. Sincerely, sir, no matter how holy you are, every day you are challenged to say no after you are said yes yesterday. And the day you say no, the man called, the man called Judas, who died on the cross, he did not die on the cross on the day of his call, he said yes. But at some moment, he began to say yes to money and no to the ways of Christ. His outcome, he died on the cross, he died on a tree, 
hanging himself in suicide. He's the first believer. And somebody say, oh, you, you hang yourself on a tree. Oh, you're already a believer. So, when and how you respond, how you say yes, they mean something. The perfect plan of God for your life begin practically when you follow his son. So it's important that you follow him as the apostles followed. He says, follow me. How did, how did the apostles follow? The scripture says they followed, they left immediately. We have been talking about this. If it takes you 25 years to leave, it means for those 25 years, you have consequences of somebody who stays in that place. If Abraham did not leave when he left, his plan, the plan of God will not start. The plan of God starts when you leave. If God has a plan for you in Aket, and he says, come to Aket, and you say, I will come to Aket, I'll stay in Uyo, I'll come to Aket in 20 years. The day you enter into Aket is the day the plan begins. So some of you here have suffered from spiritual dwarfness. Stunted growth. Staying in one level forever. Why? We have not left. Imagine a child that is born has not left the place of just lying down. A child has to live lying down to sitting up. A child has to live sitting up to crawling. And then trying to stand. Sir, mothers don't help their children to sit up or to rise and sit. Children, when it reaches a particular point, a child begins to struggle to sit. Begins to struggle to move. Begins to struggle to stand. Each of these times, if you miss sitting, you miss standing, you miss all of this, 20 years later, you are a 20-year-old lying man. Many of us here, we are 50 years in church, but 50 years old lying Christians who lie down and complain. Fear hike, I will die. Everything kills you. If it doesn't kill you, complain, I should have died. Back and I'm by a kami. I want me up, I mean, pa, I mean, pa, I mean, pa. I for mook, pa, I mean, so give me my mother died and I didn't die. That's my pain. My wife died and I didn't die. I should have been the one to die, not my wife. Now that your wife died and you have not died. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You lie down and wait to die. Rise. Tell somebody, rise. I'm sorry, sir. You know, my preaching is not... I will make you feel good. I will tell you I love you before you go. Sincerely, you will feel good before you go. But now rise up. <laughs> you know, because it looks like I'm fighting with you. I just want to tell you I'm not that bad. Before you go sincerely, I promise you I will, I will make you feel good. I will tell you I love you. But before I tell you I love you, turn to somebody and tell somebody, rise. 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 If you have a husband who has been lying down and complaining forever, look for him in this church. Rise. The other, stand up. 20 years later, you are still lying down. As a young man, 25 years later, you are still in one position. We think it's only human beings that are dwarfed, not being able. You think autism is not only physical condition, a mental and clinical or medical condition. There is spiritual autism. There is spiritual palsy. There is spiritual... Not being able to rise. Just sitting down like a moron. Not being able to hear, to talk. Spiritually, you neither hear. You know, will you talk? You have sat down, you have bed lying down. You have not been able to go to anywhere. Why? When you were told, leave, follow me, you did not follow. Because of that, your family is suffering. Your marriage has suffered. Your children have no future. You are a burden wherever you are. Spiritually, you look for those who will carry you like the man that was carried by four friends. They carried him to Jesus and he stood up. 
How many times have they brought you here? It is today to stand up. People cannot be carrying every day. Some of you, you are too heavy on your wife. Because of you, your wife is only 35. She has blood pressure. Some of your wife, your husband is only 45. He has stroke. Because of the weight of carrying you. Because you have not stood up. Just guys say, follow me. Matthew stood up immediately. If you stood up 20 years ago, your story would be different. How long will you stay? This is the point. So if you come and sit in church and think it's just another church day, another church day, and when you leave, Ufa zero, and you go and talk about Ufa Abazi, and you don't talk about what happened in your own soul. Ufa Abazi is not a tent. Ufa Abazi is your soul. Jesus Christ says that you are the temple. Temple of God. Raise your right hand. Bonaba. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, and wait before I take you to another one. I'm sorry. I told you I will make you feel good. I will make you love me before you go. Trust me. You will love me before you go. Before I tell you that. Before I tell you that. What specifically are you rising from? And when are you going to rise? You have to know specifically. So before you say, nah, but before you say, I am not lying again. I am responding. God has a plan for you, sir. And that plan is turning your ordinariness into strange impact-making personality. In every area of your life, it starts with rising. Leave. When you leave, that is when it starts. So I want you to do something. Don't do it like a church thing that we do. Let it come from your heart and your bone. Let it come from your heart that determines to rise. And, and if you are standing here and this message is like a message that is not relevant to you, that you have nothing to leave, you are a dead body. A dead body cannot be challenged. A dead body cannot turn around. A dead body is worse than a child that has slid down in one place for 50 years. Because that one can hear and at least feel and breathe. Dead body. So if you are here and you feel your Christianity is too high and there is nothing to live, ask your wife. Ask, ask in every area. Ask God. In case you are perfect before your wife and husband. In case you are perfect everywhere you go, go to God. Just guys, he, he said, be holy for I am holy. He didn't say be holy as your husband. Or your, he didn't say be holy as your prophet. Some of you say, you are, I'm better than my pastor. So why should I go to church when my life is better than all these preachers? Sir, you don't go to church because of the bitterness of this preacher. God didn't say be holy as your pastor. He said, be holy because I am so God is a standard. So if you have nothing to rise from in order to be like God's plan for you, so you are a dead body. But the good thing is that the Holy Ghost will wake you up today. So do what I ask you to do. You will wake up. Raise your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. That is how you raise the dead. Say I rise. Not 50 years from now. I live. Not 100 years from now. Speak it like you mean it. Say I rise. And I depart from these old things. I depart from these old places. I depart from this old mindset. I depart from these old spirits. Say, I am tired of old age. I rise into a new life. Speak it out. Say, I rise into a new life. I rise into new beginnings. I rise into my health. I rise into my wealth. I rise into my purity. I rise into my holiness. I rise into my salvation. In the name of Jesus, shout, I will not go back. That is enough to raise the dead. If somebody is still dead, raise your hand, let me see you. So I can, I can come and raise you personally. Be seated, I'm sorry. I've told you, I will tell you I love you at the beginning. But let's settle this thing. Let's make things easier. Many people who use their office to keep people poor. So people will do contracts and die before the, the money that was due for them is released. You go to civil service. Witchcraft lives in civil service. And witchcraft lives in church. So don't start laughing. Because it is first of all in church we are believers before we go to civil service. 
And we are pastors sitting on people. We are ministers robbing people. And carrying titles and thinking title is Christianity. Nonsense. Ruth. Let's talk about the difference between Ruth and Opa. This is where I will leave you today. Next week, I'm going to tell you something very special. And I will not be angry with you. So don't think I will be angry. It's a promise. The difference between Ruth and Opa is in the time and the extent of living and letting go. Ruth is one of the few books of the Bible that are named after a woman. The other one is Esther. After that, you don't see any other one. So Ruth is iconic. Ruth is a Moabite. I'm just giving you the CV of Ruth. Ruth is a Moabite woman. According to the law of God and command of God to Israel, Israel was not to marry Moabites. They were not to marry anybody from Moab. Moab was to be an eternal enemy of God's people. But Ruth, how did Ruth become a book in the, God, in the Bible? How did Ruth become the ancestor, the mother of the great-great-grandfather of Jesus in the flesh? It was about living. It was answering a call immediately and totally. If you ask the apostles, how did they answer their own call? Peter said, we have left everything. Matthew chapter 19, verse, 30, uh, yes, verse 27. We saw it last week. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. See, we have left everything. Not only that they left immediately, not 20 years later, but they left everything. Pay attention, this is where we are ending. So Ruth left immediately, and Ruth left everything. So you can only become a book in the book of God. You can only become an icon in the story of God. You can only become a champion in the plan of God. If you live immediately, not 20 years later, and if you live completely. Next week, we're going to talk about the implication, very serious implications of not living immediately and not living completely. Very serious. So you pay attention to that. Ruth chapter 1 verse 11 to 16. Naomi had heard after the husband Elimelech died, Kilion and Malon died. And she heard that God had visited Bethlehem again. So when a young man stops coming to church because I, I talked against Japa, Elimelech left for Moab when there was no bread in Bethlehem. And he never came back. Elimelech died. Malon died. Kilion died. By the time it was time, by the time it was, uh, you know, due for Naomi to go, he went to Bethlehem. They called him Naomi. He said, "Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara." So you don't live without direction. You don't live out of ambition. You live by instruction and direction, sir. I represent instruction and direction here, not not pressure, not pressure from account. You cannot preach your account. I preach God's revelation. But Naomi said, turn back. Told them, hey, all of you, uh, you Ruth and Opa, turn back. Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Uh, turn back. Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husband? Turn back. My daughters, go. For I am too old to have a husband. Too old to have a husband for you. If I should say I have hope, if I, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, will you wait for them till they were grown? Will you restrain yourself from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Verse 14, then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Opa, see this, Opa kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clung to her. Opa went back. Ruth stayed with Naomi. There was a spiritual call. Heaven was looking for who will be the mother of the ancestor of Jesus. Every day, sir, there is a call. There was a call in the heavens. God saw Jesus was coming. And God, who will be a vessel of grace? Why is Jesus the bringer of grace? 
it is first of all revealing Ruth. Ruth shouldn't be the mother of the ancestor of Jesus because she was a Moabite, a wrong woman. When you make yourself available, sir, God will turn your wrongness into rightness. It begins with living. Once you live, everything wrong in you becomes raw material for God to fashion what is beautiful. I speak into spirits in this place. Speak into your heart. Whatever is the reason of your hopelessness, whatever is the reason of your shame, whatever is the reason of your pain, whatever is the reason of mockery, as you live and turn to God, oh, you shall be known, you shall be seen, and you shall be celebrated. I don't know how, but I know God will. In the name of Jesus. So I'll be seated. I'm done. I'm done. Sorry. Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. This other upper, have you ever heard? This is the last time that upper is mentioned in the Bible. After kissing Naomi, it is done. No more upper. And the next time somebody want, was caught, do you know Oprah Winfrey? I've told you this several. Oprah Winfrey is actually upper. So she was named after this woman who kissed and went back into nothingness. But thank God, the person who did the, mar the name registration misspelled. So instead of O R P A H, it now became O P R A H. The same letters misplaced. And Oprah Winfrey is one of the greatest stories of people rising from nothing at the secular level into something. Oprah Winfrey. And God did make somebody to make a mistake. And God said, no one that I will use to make women and people to rise from black communities and make people, make it an, an inspiration for others. I will not let that woman answer the name of somebody who did not leave, who did not depart. You will leave and depart. Amen. Your name will not be a curse. Your children will not wake up in the future and wish they had a different father or mother. It depends on how you live, sir. Please be patient with me. I'm done. Verse 15. She said, look, your sister-in-law did not say Opa. Nobody mentions Opa again. Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people. Gone back to her people. Return after your sister-in-law. Look at what Ruth said. Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. These words are the words that have made a Moabite woman the mother of the ancestor of Jesus in the flesh. From being a wrong person, make confession of living. Say, I live now. I will not visit you later. It is now. And I will not leave some. I leave all. And that's the story of the book of Ruth. Please just rise to your feet. I came today with a fire in my spirit as a call. God knows you more than you know yourself. So if you have a justification of the self, I meet you in the place of God who knows you. I just want you to give me one, one, one gift. Lift up your two hands. I'm begging you. I came to you as a father. I came to you as a son, as a mother, as a daughter. I came to you as single. I came to you as married. I came to you as born again. I came to you as somebody not yet born again. I came with a call. And your future looks like how you answer this call. And when you answer this call. When will you respond? Will it be when you are too old? No longer have reason for pleasure? Will it be when you are tired with the useless things your life associated with or will it be now and how are you going to live is it partly partially is it like Ananias and Sapphira they answered the call partially brought some and left some do you know what happened Ananias and Sapphira they died everything God asks you to leave behind and follow him everything that he asks you to leave behind and follow him any part of it that you keep is the poison that kills. And this should not be taken 
like a joke. What is it that God has asked you to leave behind? And what other part of it are you keeping? When God tells you leave, if you don't leave that time, you make room for setback and delay. Today, lift up your two hands. I break the yoke of setback in your life. I break the yoke of delay in your life. Today, I break the yoke of partial submission in your life in the name of Jesus. I ask God for a gift today that for the first time, it will be said of somebody in this house today that he left immediately and left completely. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, now speak the rest for yourself. Whether you are leaving now, what have you left? What is God demanding of you? Your life. Say, Lord, I, I bring this life to you all gently, totally, not partially, all gently now and totally. Lord, let my journey with you begin. Let my walk with you begin. Let your plan in my life begin. Let your future in my life begin. Let your wealth in my life begin. Let your holiness in my life begin. Let your righteousness in my life begin. Oh, let your works in my life begin. Let your work begin. Father, everyone who is making this confession in spirit and in truth, Papa, I'm asking for one thing. Instant response from your throne. Sir, please lift up your two hands. There is visitation in this place. God has been waiting. There is a whirlwind. Yes, I'm told there is a whirlwind. There is a whirlwind to take somebody from one place to another. There is a whirlwind. Make yourself available. Lift up your two hands. Say, Lord, I cannot live by myself. God said, I should tell you, there is a whirlwind to make you, to, to take you away from all things and all places. All mindset and systems and attachments and connection. All you need is surrender, surrender. So Lord, I surrender to your spirit. I surrender to your spirit. I surrender to your spirit. Surrender to your spirit. I surrender to your spirit. Surrender to your spirit. Surrender to your spirit. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take over my life. If you are a child of God, say, Lord, power me again. Revive me again. In the name of Jesus Christ, lay your right hand on your forehead. Let me ask your help of the spirit upon you. Father, I have no power of my own. I cannot speak these words and cause these words to happen. For I am not God. Only God can decree a thing and bring it to pass. I have spoken. Your word says that you confirm the predictions. You confirm the speaking of your servants. Lord, I have a proof of your calling in my life. I am aware of it. Make it evident in somebody's life that this word is from you. As somebody lays their hand on the forehead, cause well win to enter somebody's life. Bring change in the name of Jesus. Let yokes of immorality, adultery, fornication, pornography, let yokes of drugs, let yokes of betting, addiction of any kind, let yokes of lies, waywardness, rebellion, let the yokes of carnal life and ancient things be broken in somebody's life in the name of Jesus. For every believer standing here who had run out of gas of the spirit, cause revival to rebirth in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause this whirlwind to transport people into the place of strength. Be lifted. Should there be sickness in your body? I heal you in the blood. I heal you wherever there is sickness. By the blood of Jesus. The scripture says that by stripes you are healed. I bring the stripe of Jesus. And meet your physical, spiritual, mental, emotional and spiritual illness. And I declare you healed in the name of Jesus. I declare your doors open for favor. Oh, every door of untimely death. Oh, every door of shame. Oh, every door of regret. Oh, every door of setback. Doors of heartbreak are coming from bad news and bad issues in marriage and family. Oh, in children and business or career. Oh, in any area. I shut those doors in the name of Jesus. I cause help 
to help you. I cause favor to favor you. I cause light to shine upon you. I cause strength to strengthen you. I cause speech to help you. And I cause breakout and breakthrough to erupt in your life in the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus!